Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today we are playing Pokemon Mew U, the game where you play as a Mew. Let's get into it. So, starting things off, we have this evil team here basically talking about how you've been sighted and they want to capture you. I don't know who they actually are, they don't seem like they belong to Team Rocket. Either way, they're trying to find you. You actually have to input your name. If you put Mew in, they actually use your computer name, which is quite cool. But either way, I called myself Matty. And here I am. I am a Mew in Pokemon. I checked my levels. I'm level 30. I've got a modest nature, synchronized. I've got reflect type, transform, metronome, and psychic. So a pretty decent move pool. Really happy with the fact that I am a modest nature as well. Give me that special attack boost for psychic. And then you can just kind of go around at the start, picking up all these random items. There are a ton of fossils in this game by the way. Anyway, next up we move to the right and we find a Chansey and this is something that heals you. So there's no healing items in this game. There's no Pokemon centers. The only way to heal is berries that you can buy. There's no potions or hyper potions or anything like that. Um, so if you do find yourself in a really bad situation, you can only heal 10 HP every single time with Auron Berries or Citrus Berries. It's not great. Anyway, I got up to this guy here and it's the first time I kind of meet one of these evil people and he leads off with a level 30 Raticate and I'm like, bruh, what? And so he uses a Crunch which does a lot of damage to say that this is the first battle in the game. Luckily, Psyche does a lot of damage and I am able to take out this Raticate but that was quite a tough first battle. I don't know why they, they decided to put that in at the start. So, of course, got to go right back to Chansey and heal myself up. After that, I start talking to the locals in the town. Uh, this Jolteon tells me that these kind of like grayish patches on the ground actually have coins. So, you want, basically want to go and click on all of those because you can just get a ton of money. I then go up to the Pokemon and start buying some items. There are a ton of berries you can buy from this Pokemon. Auron berries, Lum berries, Peach berries, Cherry berries, Cherry berries, Chesto berries, Ross berries, Leopard berries, Citrus berries... All of them. So I decided to buy like 10 of each just in case I get burnt or frozen or put to sleep. Like I need to use a berry to get out of that situation. And again, the best way to heal in this game, barring the Pokemon that heal you, is literally Citrus Berries and Auron Berries. Anyway, moving on, we find a Celebi who's just chilling next to this signpost. And they're just kind of talking about... Um, future you and past you and you've made a decision that helps the future but you also need to go and do something they also tell you the kind of premise of the game you have to avoid the humans and basically save the pokemon or something like that we then go on and find a root fossil these little kind of twitches in the grass are wild pokemon uh, now you can't run away from wild pokemon which is a bit of an issue if you do run into like a dark type and stuff which is a bit unfortunate we then find a shiny espion who's just kind of camouflaged at the top of this grassy hill and they go on to talk about how they're like a time traveler or they can see the like the future using their psychic powers and to go back to them if you do want your future told and stuff like that um, we then go on and find a damp rock again dodging all of these little kind of wild pokemon and we find our way in this tunnel now there are a ton of Pokemon in this tunnel as well that, of course, are wild Pokemon that will fight you. And so I'm trying to dodge those as well. Uh, I unfortunately run into this Diglett, though. And it's all right. It's only level 30. It's nothing too crazy. So I can easily take it out. The cool thing about this game, though, is if you keep taking on the same wild Pokemon that are in the overworld, they just come back stronger. So I go back to the Diglett take him on again and he was level 30 the first time and now he's level 35 so they just keep getting stronger and stronger um, which is pretty cool if you find like a, a really good mon that gives you a ton of xp like a chancy Diglett's not the greatest mon to go up against he then turns into a dug trio as well so again just keeps getting stronger and stronger i don't fight the dug trio because i feel like at this point of the game it might be a little bit too strong so i carry on moving on and then i also find a nugget which is very useful because you can buy tms in this game so you kind of need as much money as you can get we then find a grass gem. You can lift up rocks. There's so many items you can find in this game. And there's also a plume fossil here as well. And at the time, I couldn't remember what this actually kind of regenerated into. Then find a star piece, which is an extra 4k. Very nice. And then I find a Meowth. So all of the cat Pokemon are kind of Pokemon that just sell you things in this game. And this guy sells me Toxic, Hidden Power, Ice Beam, Protect, Double Team. So I think to myself that Toxic is going to be very, very useful. Because if I do come across a bulky Pokemon that I can't kill... It'll be very, very nice to have Toxic to be able to, like, dwindle them down. Um, I also find Scold as well, but I don't have enough money, so I need to sell some things. I don't know what the fossils are used for at this point in the game, so I just decided to sell them. I hope that that doesn't bite me in the ass later on in the video. Um, but either way, I buy Scold, so I'm able to buy quite a few really good TMs. 
um, that are really, really useful. Like, Scold is just nice to have because it can have that burn chance and stuff. So I decided to teach my Mew Scold, Toxic, and Ice Beam just for a little bit of variety on my Pokemon. And then after that, we move on and I start going south. I then run into a Weasel and some more evil people that are trying to find me. They're literally just multiplying. I don't know what's going on there, but there are so many of them. Um, so I have to follow this Weasel. Not before I pick up this Smooth Rock, though. Again, these items, I'm going to use all the time. I pick up three and I'm like, bro, what the hell? And then I pick up 3,600. So I'm like, okay, fair play. This Weasel says these uh, humans obviously can't swim that fast. Um, so hopefully we can outspeed them. I'm going to just pick up some more money because we like that dollar dollar. And then we move south again. And I'm like, bro, this Weasel's following me now, but he's not in my party. What's going on? There are more Pokemon that I have to fight. Those Poliwags at the top, by the way, absolute speed demons. They are difficult to pass. You basically have to battle those. Um, so we take on a couple of more Pokemon, and then Celebi just jumps out of nowhere, and he's basically saying, you know, you shouldn't be where a time traveler is going to be, and I'm like, bro, how do I even know that you're going to be there? Anyway, they talk more about kind of the story and, and Buizel and stuff, and how Buizel is our friend and whatnot, because Celebi's seen the future. He knows what's going to happen. So after that, Buizel's like, all right, well, whatever the time traveler says, may as well join your team, and I've got a level 40 Buizel now, which is not bad at all. It's got Swift, Dive, Natural Gift, and Aquatel, and I'm thinking... May as well teach it Scold just to get that burn chance. And TMs are reusable in this game as well, which is so, so useful. So I decide to teach Scold to Buizel and carry on. We then find a Slow King who's just kind of talking about random things. Like there's a ra like a random bunch of Pokemon that are just chilling on hills that just talk to you. Like there's an Eevee here as well. And he doesn't want to battle. He's got a little sad face. Uh, there's a lot of like Cloyster and Sheldon under the water as well, which I think is a really nice touch. The game actually looks really, really nice. This game is really, really well made. Anyway, we move on and find ourselves in this sort of like beach city or something like that. I'm not really sure what you would call this, like this little village. Uh, I then go around picking up all the items on the rocks because they're very useful. We then move up and Skitty's like, bro, don't go that way. There are humans there. You don't want to go in that direction. They, of course, are selling more items. They've got Earthquake, Shadow Ball, Flamethrower, False Stripe, Shadow Claw, Struggle Bug. There's a lot of really good TMs that this Skitty is selling. Um, so I've got to buy a couple of those. Again, I need Shadow Ball for those pesky Psychic types. I really need a Fighting type move for Dark types, but unfortunately, they don't sell any of those. I buy some more Citrus Berries. You can never have too many Citrus Berries in this game because there are... There are periods of time where you can't heal, like where there's no people that heal you, and you need all the berries you can get. So I buy a ton of those, and also teach Mew Flamethrower. I then move to the right and find myself in this massive kind of ocean situation, and there are a ton of trainers here as well. And I just have to battle all of them, basically. You don't have to, but it's nice to get the XP, especially when they're sending out level 46 Pokemon against my level 31 Mew. And the only things that I've really dodged are just wild Pokemon. They don't really give you that much XP. So these trainers are a little bit difficult. So I take out the Dratini. I then have to fight a level 32 Tauros, which isn't great. But luckily, I do take that out. Next up, there's a level 43 Snorlax. This thing was horrible to kill. I try and Toxic it, but it's got immunity, so that doesn't help. And also, it's got, like, Body Slam and, and Rest and stuff. And this thing absolutely annihilates me for ages. Kills my Mew. Luckily, I snag a Burn, though. And I do end up killing the Snorlax with my Weasel somehow. Like, this thing nearly ruined me. I don't know what happens if you lose in this game. I'm guessing you just go back to someone that heals you. Um, but, yeah, Mew faints, but you're still kind of acting as Mew, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, we carry on after healing. Take out Taurus. Again, there's, like... 19 trainers on this route there's so so many but i kind of need the xp and so that's just kind of what i'm doing i also find myself a sunstone as well again not sure what these fossils are for and these stones are for but i'm still going to pick them all up and then come into this guy he's got a squirtle only level 37 i'll take him out this girl here bro her pokemon is ridiculous she sends out a level 42 weavile with night slash how I got through this battle, I have no idea. Luckily, it went for Snatch on the first turn, so I was able to Flamethrower it. I also snag a Burn, which also really helped out. But still, Night Slash, even with a Burn, did so much to me. So I think that is relatively a difficult battle. I think I just got really lucky. I then find myself battling up a barrel. I take that out. Next up, we have a Sfeel. I take that out. Again, there's only one Pokemon per person, so it's not like you're spending ages here. But anyway, I take out all of these trainers, and I find my way into this forest. Um, with a couple of other extra items that you can pick up. Again, these mushrooms sell for a bit. I'm just trying to find a ton of stuff that sells. Uh, Celebi is over here on the right, but I kind of just want to look around a little bit more, and I actually find a Relic Crown. Again, no idea what these are for, but I'm picking all of them up 
um, which again could be useful later on. Anyway, next up we talk to Celebi and again they're just kind of talking to us more about the situation and what's kind of going on. Uh, and this is also a special place because this tree gives off waves of life energy, which is pretty cool. And then he goes on and says, oh, you're saying you found some cool fossils to revive. So I can actually revive one of the fossils. So the plume fossil, the dome fossil, sunstone, relic crown, damp rock, smooth rock or icy rock. I go for the Sunstone. I don't really know why. I probably should have saved and checked what all of them were. I have no idea what they all were. Um, but I actually get a Soul Rock. A soul Rock. Literally one of the worst options I could have got. I definitely should have turned it off and restarted. But I hadn't saved in a while. And I didn't want to lose all of that progress. So I'm stuck with a Soul Rock. And then another Celebi jumps out of nowhere. Don't even know what's going on in this bit. I'm just really annoyed the fact that I got a Soul Rock. Anyway, the Celebi Celebi's dip off. And I have a look at Soul Rock. Luckily it's level 45 which is quite nice. Uh, it has the Levitate ability. It's got Psychic, Heal Block, Stone Edge, and Solar Beam. So I think to myself, to be fair, Sol Rock is kind of bulky. It's a high level. I may as well teach it like Toxic and stuff just in case. Because at the moment, um, just Mew's got Toxic. So I don't really want to be using Mew with Toxic. So I decided to just heal everyone up. Give them all a Citrus Berry. Forget Toxic on Sol Rock. And then that allows me to not have to learn Toxic on Mew either. So I decided to teach Shadow Ball to Mew just so I've got a little bit of variety on my team um, because I don't really want one of my move slots being Toxic. Next up, we finally find our way out of the forest, which seemingly took me about 20 minutes. I have to go all the way back, basically to the cave where the Skitty said not to go into, um, which is a bit of a trek, to be fair. There's, there's obviously all the water I have to pass through. I finally make my way back, though. Come over to Skitty, who of course has more items and stuff, but I don't really need to buy any more because I've got like 124 citrus berries. Skitty's telling me not to go again, but Weasel comes out and says, no, we got to go this way. Celebi said so, get out of our way. And I find myself in this cave. And I think I should probably save it here because at this point, I, I haven't saved it in a while. I don't want to lose a lot of progress. Smash up some rocks, get some money. You know the drill by now. You literally have to click A on everything in this game because you get all the all the items in the world. Uh, next up, there's a mud kit that I find. There's also a soul rock. There's random Pokemon in this cave for sure. There's a Krabby here. You know, I'm smashing that rock for that 682 money. There's a mud kit up there. He's not really doing much though. He's just saying he's not stuck until the tide comes in anyway. More rocks to smash. More moolah to grab. There's a Lalip here with 2,500 that he's guarded. No wonder he's guarding that. So I grabbed that. Then Weasel jumps out and he's saying we're heading in the right direction we need to get out of this cave and then he just kind of starts wandering around i don't really know what's going on with him he just kind of feels lost so i carry on anyway and then i find uh the direction out which is this little dive spot so we can go underwater and i actually have which is really cool the little like pink kind of ball that Mew has in the movies which I really really like. Next up there's double battles. Level 48 and 42 by the way. Absolutely ridiculous. The level jump in this game is crazy. Like I don't know how I got through all these double battles honestly. There's so many to get through and again it's not like you get a random ba battle every two minutes. It's literally just when you go across the kind of um, rustling in the grass. So you sort of have to dodge those um, to be able to like not have to battle everything, but they are hard to dodge and especially when there's a Starmie and a Staryu on the other end of it These were really annoying to kill Luckily, I burned the Starmie with Scald get a bit more XP on Mew who's now level 35 So Mew is getting on a bit now getting higher and higher up the levels um, We of course have to heal though after every single battle because that's just the situation I'm in like literally every battle you you basically nearly lose you have to heal up at the end of every single one with, and, and we haven't healed in a long time. Like, there's no healing people in here. Um, this is, like, deep into the water right now. We went through the cave, and now the water is getting harder and harder. There's still loads of Pokemon here. Another Starmie and a Staryu. I barely got through this battle last time, uh, but now they're here again. And they do take out my Buizel. Luckily, Solrock comes in and Stone Edges the Staryu. Um, but again, it's just... There's no revives either, so Buizel's just kind of dead now. And there's more... Po there's so many. They're so difficult to dodge. And then they bring out a level 44 Whiskash and a level 43 Tentacruel. This is absolutely ridiculous i luckily beat those though somehow and then uh find uh, i don't know what the time is just 3 30 they're nothing crazy and again you start having to play like a little mini game with yourself just trying to dodge this grass because more and more of these battles you're just going to eventually lose because you just can't keep taking them out like this was another double battle which i nearly lost because of this bloody tentacruel like this thing had scold and stuff it was just a whole situation um however though i do actually find an odd keystone which i was really happy about because i feel like now i know what these fossils are for that you can revive them and stuff i think that a spirit team is going to be very very useful on my team so of course i'm gonna pick up that odd keystone and we finally find our way out of the water 
Porcelain is here luckily and can heal us and we find ourselves on this beach situation. There's a Lipard here talking about the humans and stuff. Of course, another Pokemon that's going to sell us stuff. They sell Orenberry, Citrus Berries, Blizzard, Thunderbolt, Psychic. I think to myself the uh, Thunderbolt is going to be very useful because of all the water type Pokemon that I've had to fight so far. And then there's another item here. And then Celebi is basically saying uh, we need to go back to the future timeline or the past timeline or whatever. Go into that building and I'll show you everything. Um, so, of course, that's exactly what we do. We go inside the building and then it looks like we're in some sort of Team Rocket hideout. Um, and then we just kind of talk to Celebi a bit. They're just telling us about how we're fine because we're in the past. Basically, we, we can't be seen because we're in like a past kind of dimension thingy or whatever. And we're just learning more about the story and how they are kind of talking about Mewtwo and the DNA um, it's basically kind of like an origin story of Mewtwo and Mew, how they created Mewtwo from our DNA. Then Celebi bolts, and I'm like, bro, you cannot leave me here. But luckily, you just go on a little bit further, and then you're back in another kind of past thing. Again, they're talking about the Mewtwo project, how it's stronger, uh, and Team Rocket still funding them and stuff. So yeah, I don't know if this is Team Rocket or just like a random criminal organization. I then go and talk to the guy for whatever reason, and he sends me to prison. So I have to go battle him. I don't know the situation, but uh, he has a really strong team. He has a Lipod and a Mighty and a both level 45. Again, they sell no fighting type moves in this game. At least I've not come across any. So it isn't like great when you find these dark type Pokemon. They are tough to beat. And of course, there's no healing items, uh, healing situations or anything. Anyway, we finally get Buizel to level 41 and it starts evolving into a Floatzel, which is very nice because Buizel is not a very good Pokemon. I know it was level 40, but it was absolutely terrible. Uh, luckily though, Floatzel does have something about it and we are able to uh, evolve that and just have a little bit more power on the team because, again, it was never fun when that thing was uh, getting destroyed left, right and center. We're in another kind of past thing here with the Porygon talking about the analysis, how there's a chance that Mewtwo can exist and stuff. Mew's extinct apparently even though I'm just chilling here. Um, they're just again talk it's just a lot of like story stuff here. It's it's a really good story to be fair. It's really well made. Um, and then after that Celebi bolts again and there's more trainers that I have to fight again. They've got more dark types straight back to Juvie. This guy has another Lipard, another Mightyena and like I say these battles are so tough because they have Night Slash, they have Assurance, they have Sucker Punch or whatever. They've got really good moves and I've got no super effective moves for them. But anyway we take them out I need to heal up again. Again, you, you kind of notice a theme when you play this game of how much you actually need to heal. Luckily, Citrus Berries are so cheap. Anyway, I move on and I find more trainers here. I'm like, bro, I've had enough Lipards and my Tiennas for one day. So I'm just going to go up north and I actually exit this kind of building, uh, which is really cool. And then I'm still on my own. I move up forward and then there's another Corsler, another person that heals us, which thank God, because again, I can't revive any Mons. Celebi's down here. Another Lipard is here as well. So they're selling more items, more story stuff. Um, so I go over to the Lipard, talk to him, and again, they're selling more stuff, and they sell Blizzard, Rain Dance, Smackdown, uh, Psychic, obviously more Citrus Berries, Auron Berries. I finally come across the first fighting type move, by the way, which is Brick Break, but at this point, I'm like, it's not really worth it, you know, I've not really got the money to be able to buy something, I don't know who to teach it to. I know that Mew can learn it, but I'm modest nature, so Brick Break isn't going to do too much, and they can then revive another Pokemon, so of course, I'm going to choose Spiritomb. So I look into my team, and Spiritomb is level 45. I'm like, bro, yes, give me this Mon. It's got the pressure ability, Ominous Wind, Sucker Punch, Nasty Plot, and Memento, which is very useful, because Memento, whenever you take on a boss, it's just nice to have, because it lowers the special attack and the physical attack. So I give it a Citrus Berry, and then I decide to myself that I may as well teach Toxic to this thing. It has no weaknesses, barring Fury, which I've not even come across in this game. So I think that will probably be the best Pokemon to have for Toxic Stalling Pokemon. Anyway, moving on, I have to go north into more oceanic routes, which at this point, I'm like, I probably should have just taught myself Thunderbolt because it would have just helped out. But then I come across a Rhydon, and I'm like, oh, damn. But, of course, luckily, I have Ice Beam. I don't have Scold, but Ice Beam's still good enough. Takes out half the health. It's level 48, by the way. I get a cheeky freeze. Always nice. Thank you very much. Christmas coming early. But, yeah, level 48. I think to myself that this boss in this game is going to be a ridiculous level. Um, and I'm kind of stuck. I'm a bit lost. I'm like, bro, where do I go? Luckily, there's another dive spot, though, and I go under here. There's more grass twitching and stuff. Again, playing those mini games. I come over to Floatzel. I don't know if this is my Floatzel or just a random Floatzel, but either way, I'm trying to dodge trainers here as well because... I know there's going to be a big battle at the end of this. I don't really want to use up all my items and stuff trying to take on these Pokemon. Or, and I don't want to like have any Pokemon that faint. And especially when the levels of the Wild Pokemon. 53 and 51, by the way. That is absolutely ridiculous. And they nearly kill me. Um, straight back onto the Citrus Berries. Need to heal again. Surprise, surprise. 
You know, these Pokemon are a little bit too difficult. Give them all a Citrus Berry to hold, heal them all, go to Floatzel, and then obviously go up. The trainer does spot me, though, which is a little bit unfortunate. I don't think they have the craziest Pokemon, though. It's just a Makuhita. Finally, something that I can one-shot. Um, luckily, I can just Psychic it. Goes for Endure, which is a little bit annoying because, again, just waste a bit of time. Uh, however, though, we then go under the water again and then find another dive spot after playing another mini game with this wild Pokemon. And again, like I say, it is literally just trying to time your movements because they're just too strong. Like, I can't keep fighting these Pokemon. We then go up here, and there's another trainer. Uh, unfortunately, she does see me. These guys have got, like, X-ray vision, like, like, Hawkeye ears of a gazelle or something, because they do not let you pass. I then come up against this thing. Uh, this thing nearly destroys me. This thing has Megahorn. This Bufflunt did not come to mess about. It's level 49. Luckily, I can Toxic Stall it, though. Megahorn still does a bit of damage, so I have to just kind of, like, keep he healing with Citrus Berries, which eventually does help out, and I do take out the Bufflunt. But again... Gotta heal the rest of my team because that thing did a number on me. I dive under the water. More mini games to go. So I have to dodge these kind of grass patches. And again, gets harder and harder as you get further on. There's just a random Bastion in there. I don't know what he's doing there. I then finally make my way up here and find Mewtwo, the final boss. You don't actually save it here. Like, it actually saves automatically. Like, it, it just tells you to save. So I look at him and I'm like, right, who am I going to lead with? May as well lead with Spirit Team so I can get a fat Toxic off and start stalling this thing. It says, finally I've come. The humans that call Matty have heard many stories of me and then battles me. I'm like, bro, what level is this going to be? It's level 55. This Mewtwo is ridiculous. It's got a stupid move pool. It's higher leveled than me. So I think I've got to get a Toxic straight off the bat. It goes for an Amnesia, which isn't great. Just simply because my special moves are going to be doing nothing. And I pretty much only have special moves as well. I do get the Toxic off though, which is very useful. I know that Toxic can be kind of seen of a bit of a a bit of a bad way to win but i didn't really know how else i was going to win this battle because shadow ball from this thing just destroys my whole team um so i just start ominous winding and stuff that shadow ball did a lot so i decided to memento especially because this thing has recover and i know that if i lose spirit team here and this thing has got like normal attack and special attack it's going to just rip through my team so i decided to get a memento off cut this pokemon's attack and special attack by two stages and then i can go into mew because i have to fight mew too with mew like it's just it's just the situation it's got to be done and I think that I can start taking Shadow Balls as well now this thing is at minus two. I know it is uh, like 26 levels higher than me or 15 levels, 16 levels higher than me. Um, but I can still start doing damage to it. It goes for Psycho Cut, which is very useful. Uh, and then I start going for Shadow Balls. I'm in a good position here. Mewtwo is not enjoying this situation at all. Like my Shadow Ball is doing nothing because of the Amnesia. But luckily the Toxic Stall is destroying this thing. I don't think I really needed to Toxic it. I think the Memento was fine. But either way, it was it was just nice. I didn't know how ba like bad this battle was going to be. I take out Mewtwo, though, and that is the end of Pokemon Mew Mew. And that is just the credits there just saying, thanks for playing. Just would you like to save the game? It took me 45 minutes, 44, 44 minutes to beat this game, which wasn't too bad at all. It was a nice little game to play, to be fair. really enjoyed it. Anyway, if you enjoyed, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and see you next time.